Hi. Hi! And welcome back to another family reaction video. Today we're going to be doing a reaction that kind of uh, ties in a lot with our recent announcement videos. If you don't know what we're talking about, go back and watch it. Go and check it out where we have huge news that will change the future of this channel forever. Forever. And so, ever and ever. So go and check it out. And anyway, this one is the 10 culture shocks for, what is it? 10 culture shocks foreign tourists have when they visit America. What could it be? <laughs> I don't so, know. This, I am so excited to find out. So okay. this is from Mark from Walter's World, and we re uh, we actually have already reacted to a video from him, so make sure the link to this video is down in the description, so make sure you go to and visit his channel and give him the credit he deserves. For yeah, his channel's cool. There's lots over yeah, there. Go and watch it. For making these awesome videos. Yeah. And yeah, this one's... Uh, 18 minutes long, so let's get straight into it. Let's go. Let's do it. I wonder if there's gonna be an overlap, you know, what with, with the, the don'ts some, of visiting USA. Yeah, yeah, I want some new juicy stuff. Okay. Hey there, fellow travelers. Mark here with Walter's World. Today we're in Springfield, USA. Yes, the home of the Simpsons. Well, actually not the actual yeah. home of the Simpsons. There's actually about 20 or 30 Springfields throughout the US. This just happens to be Springfield, Illinois. And today what we have for you are 10 things that are gonna shock you about when you come to the US. Because there are things that do shock people when they come here. You know, how many flags are flying all around every single city and and how many starbucks and mcdonald's are at every single city and and the americans actually eat cheese that's in a oh can no spray in their mouth what the heck oh. is that <laughs> hey, look no need to refrigerate <laughs> I'm not even talking about the politics of the U.S., which is also a shocking kind of thing. Today, we're going to focus on our 10 things that shock foreign tourists when they come to the U.S. So let's get started, okay? All right, so the first thing that's going to shock you when you come to the U.S. are the sizes of the U.S. Now, when I talk about sizes of the U.S., I mean the actual size of the U.S., this country is huge. I mean, it's the size of a continent, okay, when you want to get around. But also the sizes of the food you get here, the portion sizes, free refills. Oh, my God, it's soda without end. But also the size of the people. And that's why I really kind of focus on the size of the U.S. is the first kind of shock. Because I'll meet tourists that are wow. coming to the U.S. And they're like, oh, I'm going to fly into New York, just rent a car in New York, drive down to Miami, and then drive over to Las Vegas to do some gambling. That shouldn't take so long. I mean, it's all in the same country. What you need to realize is the U.S. is huge. That drive from New York City to down in Miami is going to take you 18 hours straight of driving. That means no potty breaks, no getting food, no getting gas. 18 hours straight. Oh no, of course, no no construction, no no traffic jams, nothing like that. I mean, it's literally, you know, 1,300 miles or about 2,000 kilometers just from New York to the tip of Florida. Wow. And then if wow. you want to go from Florida to Las Vegas, well, that's another 4,000 kilometers. And it is Look huge that. distances no when you are traveling in the US. And that does oh, surprise people when they realize as well, this there. is a lot bigger than traveling around Germany. Well, yeah, Germany, you can take the train around and see everything. Here in the US, you just really can't do that. The distances are just too big. And of course, with those sizes, I said the portion sizes here. One of the things I love to see is when people realize that we have free refills in the US. If you're getting soda, not in a can, but a fountain soda, you know, when they pour the soda for you, if you go to a restaurant, most of the time, your Coke, your Pepsi, your Mountain Dew, which has super caffeine stuff, your Dr. Pepper, or root beer, which foreigners tend to hate, but we Americans love, it's free refills. You just get more and more and more. So you only pay once and you get all the soda you ever want. Sadly, that free refill stuff doesn't count for alcohol, <laughs> dang it. But the thing is, is that free refills, but also the portion sizes here in the US kind of explain some of these things. Because you'll see is when you're going to get your McDonald's or whatever in Germany, you get the large there, okay? The large is a half liter. Well, the large in Europe is just a medium here. Because here you can get literally larges that are like this big. It is insane, the big portion gulp, huh? sizes. Wow. When you go to a restaurant, sometimes you'll think, man, there's enough on one plate to feed two people. Yes, there probably is. So just know when you're coming to the US, you might pack on a few pounds or I'm kilos or that. stones, whatever, you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever measurement you want to use, because there is a lot of really big portion Eating sizes. Spicy ones. There are a lot of really good food around here in the US. No, it's not just McDonald's. We we go to other places too. And then the third of those size things are the size of the people. Yes, there are a lot of um, husky, as I like to call myself, husky fluffy Americans. 
yes, we do eat a lot, and no, we don't go around a lot, we're driving a lot and things like that, and so you will see a lot of big people here. But the thing is, not every American is a big, fat slob like me, okay? There's all kinds of shapes and sizes of Americans that you are here, so don't just think every American just goes to McDonald's and gets fattened up. That's just me, okay? So just know that there are, the size of the U.S. will shock you when you look at those things, all right? Now, the second thing that's gonna shock you when you come here has to do those people, it is the people. Look, there is this rumor that, oh, Americans are just fake friendly. No, Americans really are super friendly. No matter where you go, people will try to help you. They'll show you around. They'll say, hey, which restaurants should you go to in this town? What site should we see? Hey, I'm lost. Could you help me find the highway? People are really nice from the U.S. and in different parts. You go to Minnesota, they're insanely friendly. In the South, they're insanely friendly. And that's one thing is people need to understand is the U.S., we do help each other out. We do ask you, hey, how are you? Hey, how's it going? How can I help you? These are normal things. And that service kind of scares tourists when they come. They're like, I just walked in the store and they're asking me, how can they help? I don't even know what your store has yet. How can you help me when I don't even know what you have? Look, just know that in the US, we're all about service. We're going to ask you right away, what can you get? What do you need to drink? Nice. What do you want to order? Can I help you with your clothes? Like what are you looking for? That is just how we work here. Another thing is when you look at the US, you're gonna have a big mix of people here. There's no one American. You know, you always have these stereotypes of this or this or this of Americans. Look, Americans come in all shapes, all sizes, all religions, all colors, all creeds, all hairnesses. <laughs> because honestly, the only fake stuff you see in the U.S. are the artificial colorings. Like you're going to see like the Fantas and, and the sodas and the cereals. You're like, wow, those colors like glow in the dark. <laughs> yes, the artificial coloring thing here, that's the yeah. fakeness of the U.S. The friendliness of the people, that's not fake. They're awesome. So we're in Las Vegas now. And the third thing that's going to shock wow, you when you come to the U.S. is ID, please. I need some identification, please. The fact that people have to have an ID to buy liquor and buy cigarettes in the U.S. Because in the U.S. you have to be 21 to buy alcohol and 18 to buy cigarettes. And basically you have to look like you're 40 to actually buy them without <laughs> them asking for your ID. So make sure you keep your passport with you so if you're going to buy stuff, you have that. And it's not just you, the person buying it, the people with you, they might need an ID too. All right, we wow. left the desert of Vegas. Now we're here on the coast here in Florida. And the fourth thing that's gonna shock you when you come to the US is the price is never actually what you pay. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be have yeah. to get now, used to. Now in Europe and other countries, tax. you already have this VAT, value added tax, that's already put into the price. Here in the US, we have what we call sales tax, which is added on after you buy the product. So if you go to a McDonald's, you say, oh, I'm gonna get a hamburger on the dollar menu. I've got one buck, I should be able to buy it. No, no, that one buck, then you gotta put the tax on top of it. It can be anywhere from, I don't know, seven to 15%. Some states have it, some states don't. It can vary between locations. So that $1 cheeseburger or hamburger can actually cost you $1.10. It gets really frustrating when you think about it because it's not just sales tax that gets added onto a price. If you go out to a restaurant, you also have tipping. And tipping in the US is traditionally yeah. between 15 and 20% at a sit-down restaurant. So think about it. You go to a sit-down restaurant, right? So you, you got a $100 bill. Okay, I got a $100 bill in my hand, and the bill for the for the, the meal is 100 bucks. I should be fine. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no that $100, no. <laughs> well, you got to add on another 10% because of, well, taxes, right, and the sales tax, and then another 15% on top of that for tipping. So now your $100 bill for a dinner is actually $125. And I know people might not agree with tipping, but that's how it works in the U.S. They're not paid a great wage, but they make a lot more money on tips. And that's why you get this good service we, you know, we kind of talk about sometimes. That's where that comes from. Now, the fifth thing we have that shocks people is when you come here, you know, you think, oh, the U.S. is so developed. They've got all this stuff here. They must have good public transportation. <laughs> good and public transportation in the U.S. do not go together. Oh, yes, there are some cities that have decent public transportations. Chicago, New York, Boston, big cities. You probably can get some decent public transportation within the city. But a lot of places out there, there's either no public transportation or very limited Pretty transportation. Bad here, or bad public transportation that a tourist would not want to ride on. I would say that does get kind of frustrating. You're like, wait, you've got all this stuff, but you know what? You gotta drive everywhere. Anyway, the sixth thing is gonna shock you when you come here are the toilets, and specifically the public toilets in the US. 
Look, I know I talk about toilets a lot on my videos and actually one of our fans made a video of just me saying toilet, toilet, toilet in all these different places. <laughs> but I'll be honest, when you come to the US, public toilets are free. There's tons of public toilets and restaurants have them free for everybody. But the thing is, public toilets in the US are usually kind of gross. But what I think is funny is when you look at toilets in the US, I get a lot of friends of mine coming from around the world, they're like, oh my God, your toilet has so much water in it. <laughs> and yes, the US toilets do use a lot of water. Now they're, they're, they're starting to get the, the, the lower water content toilets, but there are a lot there. So you're kind of like, oh my God, wow. am I supposed to wash my feet in the toilet here? <laughs> or do I go to the bathroom in it? It's kind of crazy. <laughs> and probably another toilet thing that shocks people is when you go to a public place and they have toilets, there's so much space between the doors like you can literally look through the crack and see who's in there doing their business what business they're doing what book they might be reading okay you can look they the might be reading. and then underneath there's like this much of a gap underneath so you can see oh are their feet there but literally you can see everything so those public toilets really are quite public when you are there and it does kind of <laughs> shock people when you are there but what is wow. cool is you do have the toilets all over the place they are free everywhere yeah. around the u.s so that's that a really wow. cool thing yeah. so we've moved from the sunny coast of florida to the sunny coast or banks of the muddy mississippi river and the next shock we have for you coming to the u.s are the americanisms when you come here look there are things that are typical USA, and part of that is USA, USA. Yes, one of the Americanisms here is the patriotism in the US. You will see the flag flying all over the place, and the people, they love America, America. You will see that, and some of the kind of quirky things about Americans when you do come here, you will see, and just America in general. You know, I talked about the toilets. Well, one of the things about the toilets is, by the toilets, you always see this kind of silver box next to it and people are bending over at it. You're like, what's going on here? It's a water fountain, okay? We like to give away free stuff here in the US, whether it's free water, or free bread at a restaurant, or go to a Mexican restaurant, you have chips and salsas free until pickles. you vomit and you don't have to pay for it. I mean, there's so many Americanism little things when you're here with the flag. How much we love it? You'll have American flag t-shirts. Heck, you can have American flag undies, okay? <laughs> you know, we joke about, oh, Americans and their fast food. Well, literally, yeah. there is fast food all over the place. And yes, we do have McDonald's everywhere, but we've got more than McDonald's. You've got Culver's in the Midwest. You've got In-N-Out Burger on the West Coast. What a burger in Texas. Shake Shack in New York. And you have all these fast food places all over the place with their super huge drinks. The, the large holds one liter. I believe that's what you people call leaders, okay? And, oh, and leaders, well, there's a whole thing right there that Americans don't get. Do you know the only way Americans know the metric system is because of our soda. This is a two liter of Pepsi, this is a two liter of Coke, and you know what? That's how we know leaders here. It's by our soda sizes, okay? Otherwise, wow. we use gallons, we use feet, we use inches, we use miles. That's how they do it here. And a lot of tourists have a hard time with that when they're trying to figure out, well, well, how much is a gallon? A gallon is about four liters, just so you know, okay? It's like two of these out there. Oh, in the US, how you get great quantity discounts. See this Coke? This is a dollar. See this Pepsi? Whoa. This was a dollar at Walmart. Love you, Walmart. And let's not forget like about the Walmarts seven bucks out here there. 24 wow. hour shopping, think about it. Yesterday, my son, my oldest son, spilled ketchup all over himself crashed his skateboard and ripped up all his clothes, and so he really had nothing left for today. So guess what I did at two o'clock this morning? I went to Walmart and got some co you know, some Coke and Pepsi, and I got them clothes at 2 a.m. And we love it when we come here, and that's why tourists love it when they come here. From the friendly people to the 24 hour shopping to the cheap soda, hey, I know, you can drive those 20 hours from uh, Florida, Illinois, if you have a couple of these with you, woo -hoo -hoo, go a little crazy. <laughs> but that's the thing is, there are these- Lobster really fun Americanisms when you do come here. And that's one of the things, all you watching, if you have those funny Americanisms, please put them in the comment section below because we're going to make more videos on funny little American things when you are here. But anyway, I guess I'll go into the next uh, kind of shocking thing when you come to the U.S. And our eighth shocking thing, we're going to go back to that, you know, metric system that we only understand, <laughs> the, the soda. It goes into the driving, okay? Here in the U.S., People get shocked about the driving. And I know I talked about how there's a lack of public transport and you have to drive when you are here. But when you do drive when you're here, you will be shocked how big the roads are, how big the cars are. Yeah, oh, you got some also, big trucks and big cars and stuff. Like. Okay, if you can find a stick shift, good luck. And yes, 
you do do miles per hour here, not kilometers per hour, miles per hour. And the speed limits, they change all over the place and you never know when. It's like, oh, it just changed and the cops get you. Oh, there's a shocking thing. You know, some countries, they just have the camera that takes pictures yep. when you're going too fast. We have that some places in the US, but most of the time, you have the cops sitting on the side of the road with their radar guns watching you. Now, oh, you've Sirens, gone too yeah. fast. Mm -hmm. And the sirens come on and they drive down and pull you over. It is quite the American experience to be pulled over for speeding. So don't speed when you're here. here. And there are some other little things that are different. Here in the US, you can take a right turn on a red light. So if you're sitting there and you can take a right, you got your blinker on and people are honking at you, it's because they want you to take a right. Now make sure you look to make sure no other traffic is coming, but you can take a right okay. on red. That and the scary. thing is, we <laughs> Americans love our cars. I mean, it's the most liberating thing nice. when you're 16 years old, <laughs> 16 years old, you can get your driver's license here. And so you get your 16 license to drive, license to live, oh yeah. And that's part of the US culture. We eat in our cars, we drink in our cars. Soda, don't drink and drive. The cops will throw you in jail. They don't care what country you're from. You, from you will go to jail. Don't drink and drive, but you know, drink your liters of Coke and Pepsi. So the ninth thing that's going to shock you when you come here to the U.S. Oh, we're here in Boston, kind of the heart of history of the U.S. and the American Revolution. And the ninth thing that's going to shock you when you come to the U.S. is you will see a lot of homogeneity, i.e. that means like everything's kind of very similar everywhere you go, but also you will see definite different cultures and culture and history in the U.S. We get tons of comments saying, oh, the U.S., there's no culture there. It's just McDonald's and there's no history there. It's too young. No, there is history and there is culture here. But on the other side of it, there is a lot of homogeneity. So when you go travel around, you see the same stores. You'll see, oh, look, there's an Old Navy. Oh, look, there's a Sephora. And you'll see the same stores again and again. And it gets kind of repetitive, especially when you're going into the suburbs and kind of the newer cities and newer towns. It really looks like, I mean, I can't tell the difference between going to one city in one part of the country versus another when you're doing that shopping experience or hotels wow. and things like wow. that. So it does get kind of yeah, shocking. Cool. You're like, what town am I in? It seems the same. But having said that, there are distinct cultures and regions here in the U.S. And that does shock people because you come here to the Northeast, to New England, you know, they have definite different food. You know, you got to have the clam chowder and they have the, what they call the, uh, <laughs> the New England shield where they don't really talk to the people, but they're friendly once you get to know them. Or you got the South, they got that Southern hospitality where they feed you for days and give you tons of food and ask you how you're doing and, and all kinds of stuff. Or you got the kind of like the cool, kooky West Coast that's out there. There's definitely different cultures here in the U.S. and it does shock people when they drive around and realize, yes, a lot of the stuff looks the same, but the people are different in different parts of the country. So just know that, yes, this homogeneity will shock you, but there are different cultures out there because, yes, there is fantastic history here in Boston and great museums around the U.S., the, the Getty in L.A., the Art Institute of Chicago, the Met in New York. I mean, you can have great history, you can have great art, you can have great culture when you are here because this is a big melting pot of the world. And the 10th thing that's going to shock you when you come to the U.S. are the hotels. Look, you can actually get a good medium priced or even lower priced hotel here in the U.S. There are tons of hotel chains here, you know, Hampton Inns and Holiday Inns and all these kind of places. And it's very standardized. Okay. If you get a double room, you can probably put four people in there or 40 people in there because the rooms are a lot bigger. When you get two double beds, you get a double room, it'll have two beds i.e. two big beds. There's no two single beds pushed together like in Europe. So you have all this extra space when you are there. Now, one of the things that kind of shocks people when they do, do, the, go, do the hotels here in the U.S. is it's kind of like the relatively cheaper the hotel is, the more stuff they give you. You go to a, you know, a cheap chain hotel or a medium priced chain hotel like a Hampton Inn or something like that, and you get free Wi-Fi, you get a free breakfast, like as much breakfast as you want. Um, you know, they're gonna have a pool, all kinds of really cool stuff, no resort fees, oh my God. And then if you go to a, like an expensive, nice hotel, breakfast, oh no, you, you get to pay for that. Oh, you want <laughs> internet? Oh, that's $19 a day. You're like, what? Whoa. Oh, the pool? Oh, if you wanna use the pool and do the fun stuff, you need to do the resort fees and pay extra. You're like, wait, I'm paying triple the price for a nice hotel and I actually get less amenities when I go there. 
it kind of boggles your mind. Wow. So when you come here, just know that you can actually stay in some of these chain hotels and it's not a problem whatsoever, okay? Read the reviews about them, but you know, you know, we got a one holiday in Express, it's pretty much the same throughout the country. Remember that homogeneity of number nine? That really does come out in the hotels. But they are clean, they are safe, and there is a lot of price options out there. So just know, if you want a lot of the free stuff, actually there you go to the cheaper ones versus the more expensive ones, who have better locations and kind of cooler rooms maybe, but make you pay for a lot of things. So it's kind of shocking. Wait, I get less for more or more for less? Yes, I know, the US with our stuff, it's, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> anyway, those are our 10 kind of fun things that might shock tourists. If you want to learn more, check us out on our website at waltersworld.com. Have a great time in the US. I hope you liked the video. Please click that like button. We'll see you later. Bye. Do you know what I found the most shocking thing? What? The fact that the hotels have ice machines in every corridor. Why? Just because, <laughs> how many times do we get told to put more ice in our drinks? <laughs> yeah. It's like, the Amer they, you guys just must love ice so Yeah, much. I did actually see that, the, yeah. That's crazy. Like ice in their hot coffee. Is it that hot, <laughs> is it hot over there? They probably, that's ice coffee. Yeah, is exactly. it that hot in America? Though? I don't know, but I think I don't know. I just I like it's. Uh, I mean, if oh, you any hotel, any like motel, any Holiday Inn in New Zealand, you're not going to find an ice machine. No. You'll never find an ice machine. No. You go to the front desk and ask for some ice. They're like, uh, yeah, like I'll I suppose we could. I'll see if the freezer like might have a couple of cubes. Yeah. Like. <laughs> it ain't a thing. Yeah. No, it's not a thing here. It's not a thing. <laughs> Ah, that's interesting. Most of those I knew, except for the red light driving thing. Oh yes. Like. That's yeah, gonna be confusing. It's gonna be scary. We're already driving on the wrong side of the road. Yeah. And now we can go through red lights. Like, yeah. what else is there that we need to know about so driving? Next time you're behind someone that's not turning right on a red light, just uh, just, just have some patience because it, it could be us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. And and the hotel chain thing. The hotel thing. I I think I had heard him mention that in the previous video. Very different said, here. Yeah. The more you pay, the more you get. Yeah. That's definitely the case here. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, if you go to like a nice hotel. You, normally everything is like, you know, yeah. you get a nice breakfast, you get a nice, yeah. like, Wi-Fi is free. Yeah. Cool. But, but it's opposite yeah. there, so that's strange. Opposite there. Yeah. But I guess, at the same time, what are the locations of those, like, holiday inns and yeah. everything like that? Are they in the nice parts of town or yeah. the safe parts well, of town? Well, apparently you have to drive everywhere. So yeah. we're going to have to do car rentals as well. Yeah, exactly. All over the place. Okay. And because we can't rely on the public transportation. Public. We learned something today, didn't we? We learned a lot. We learned a lot today. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, that was another awesome video. Yeah. Big fan. And uh, if you like that one, guys, make sure you smash the like button and also comment down below and subscribe if you haven't already. And also make sure you hit the post notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. Because when you guys get the notification and you watch the video straight away and you watch it all the way through. It pushes it out for us. Helps the video a lot. So, yeah, that's about it. That's also, about check it. us out on Instagram as well. Yep, yeah, we're over there. Yeah, and we love you guys and we'll see you in the next one. Bye! Bye.